The hair is getting out of control. You ready to do this? Mm -hmm. One, two. <sighs> Welcome to A Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. It's yet another historic day here in America. And as usual, Donald Trump, it ain't the good kind of history. Ken Burns, I got your next project. The Civil War II, half the civil, all the war. For a week, America's streets have been filled with protesters enraged over the murder of George Floyd by police, while Trump said practically nothing. But last night, around 6.45, he finally appeared in the Rose Garden to calm a troubled nation by threatening martial law. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. So, in response to protests about police brutality, you're threatening to send in the army to crush them. That's like forgetting your child's birthday and apologizing by sending in the army to crush them. Trump explained his decision. I am your president of law and order. Both original and SVU. I'm also your president of CSI Miami, NCIS Los Angeles, and Paw Patrol. So, I'm sorry, you're the president of law and order and what else? and an ally of all peaceful protesters. It's true. As long as they're white, holding an AR-15 and screaming, I want a haircut. Then the president went back to his law and order theme. One law and order, and that is what it is. One law. We have one beautiful law. Wait a second. Is it possible that Trump thinks we only have one law? That's why he's broken so many? As far as I know, there's the law against ripping off those mattress tags, and everything else is the purge. Have at it. Trump ended this event with this cliffhanger. Now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. A special place? Where? Where could he be going? It's like he's the host of a reality show, especially when you see the full clip. Now I'm going to pay my respects to a very, very special place. Thank you very much. Coming up on America's Got Dictator, Donald reveals his very, very special place to Khloe Kardashian and one of Joe Exotic's tigers after this message from Buffalo Wingslims. No justice, how about a six piece? Now it turns out Trump's very, very special place was the historic St. John's Church, which had been damaged in protests over the weekend. One problem, there was a crowd of peaceful protesters in the way. So he had military police open fire with rubber bullets, flash grenades, and tear gas. Not only is that a horrific abuse of the office of the presidency and our military, the tear gas is completely unnecessary. When people see Trump walking toward them down the street, they naturally cry and vomit. And, and wait a second, didn't Trump just say this? And an ally of all peaceful protesters. I'm sorry, did I say ally? I meant a lie, as in right now, I am telling a lie. Now here's how bald this display of authoritarianism is. While he's giving his speech in the Rose Garden, you can actually hear the military flash grenades exploding among the protesters in the background. Where there is no law, there is no opportunity. And where there is law, opportunity knocks you in the head with a billy club, or just shoot you in the nuts with a rubber bullet. Once the path was cleared for Caesar's brave shamble, Trump made his way across the street to the boarded up church, where he, with visible confusion and discomfort, groped a Bible. I've only seen one of these when I was sworn in. Let's see if I can remember. I hold the Bible, then raise your right hand. Is that it? Am I extra sworn in? Am I president double stuffed? Then a reporter asked Trump about his little prop there. Is that your Bible? It's a Bible. I don't have a Bible. My Bible, as always, is Hustler Magazine. This thing is the most boring magazine I've ever seen. Doesn't even have a centerfold, which is too bad because I heard Bathsheba had a pretty sweet can. 
So, Trump left his speech in the Rose Garden and had the military clear the streets so he could come to this church. He must have had some really important things to say to haul out the authoritarian hobnail boots. So a reporter asked the president what he was thinking. Spoiler alert, not much. We have a great country. That's my thoughts. Great country, that's your thoughts? You know, the president of that country just unleashed the military on peaceful protesters. You sure you don't want to thoughts that over some more? Finally, Trump revealed his true reason for the mission, a photo op with his all-white advisors. Now, reportedly, the reason Trump wanted this meaningless photo, because he was upset by coverage of the fact that he had been rushed to the underground bunker on Friday night. Not sure if he thought that one through. Oh, they think I'm a coward, do they? I'll show them. Quick, go assault a bunch of peaceful protesters. Daddy's got to frown in front of a church and hold a Bible like a fly swatter. Keep those Bibles balanced, please. Now, not everybody loved Trump's photo op. For instance, the Bishop of St. John's, Marion Buddy, she called into Anderson Cooper last night uh, to express her feelings. The president just used a Bible, the most sacred text of the Judeo-Christian tradition, and one of the churches of my diocese, without permission, as a backdrop for a message antithetical to the teachings of Jesus and everything that our churches stand for. And to do so, as you just said, he sanctioned the use of tear gas by police officers in riot gear to clear the churchyard. I am outraged. She's right to be outraged. In fact, I'm sure the bishop would have tried to block Trump, but unfortunately, she can only move diagonally. Check and bait. And it's not like Trump's a church regular, as the bishop told CBS's Gail King on CBS This Morning This Morning. Does President Trump go to that church, your church, on a regular basis? No, no. He, um, as I mean, he's, he's rarely in church. And um, the only time he has been to St. John's, to my knowledge, was on the morning of his inauguration. It was memorable because Trump described it as the biggest crowd in church history, the most prayers, way more prayers than Obama, and I ate all of the little crackers. Kind of dry, could have used some salsa, but I did like that statue of Kid Rock in a diaper doing that swan dive. Now, Bishop Buddy was at home when Trump pulled this PR stunt, but members of St. John's Parish were present, including rectors and clergy who, throughout the day, were outside the church handing out water bottles and granola bars to protesters and expressing solidarity with their cause. As one said, we were literally driven off the St. John's Lafayette Square patio with tear gas and concussion grenades and police in full riot gear. Also, a visiting priest was sprayed with tear gas as she tried to help scared demonstrators leave the area. It reminds me of Jesus' stirring words in the Beatitudes, blessed are the peacemakers, and to protect them. Could we get some UN peacekeepers in here? Because this guy's crazy! Trump tried again today, this time with a visit to the St. John Paul II National Shrine, which got a harsh rebuke from Washington Archbishop Wilton Gregory, who released a statement saying, I find it baffling and reprehensible that any Catholic facility would allow itself to be so egregiously misused and manipulated in a fashion that violates our religious principles, which calls us to defend the rights of all people, even those with whom we might disagree. Wow, that is the worst review of a religious event since my middle school's production of Godspell. I forgot my lines and improvised. That night... Jesus knew Kung Fu. Sorry, Judas. This time I win. The president wanted another religious photo op, but this time, instead of a Bible, he brought Melania. And when the photos began, Trump seemed to tell the first lady to smile. All religious ceremony, cameras, the pained look on her face. It's always so sweet to watch a couple reenact their wedding. So Trump wants to send the United States military into your cities to stamp this down. And now you may be asking yourself, can he do that? How come you never see the military keeping order in U.S. streets? That's because it's illegal. 
The Posse Comitatus Act of 1878 prohibits the domestic use of military for law enforcement purposes without specific congressional authorization. So, according to Posse Comitatus, Trump needs consent from Congress. Unfortunately, Donald Trump never asks before he grabs us by the posse. And yesterday, Trump held a phone call with the nation's governors to threaten to help them. During the call, he unleashed U.S. Secretary of Defense and neighbor who was always so quiet we never imagined what was in his basement, Mark Esper. Esper explained how the protests must be quelled. I think the sooner that you mass and dominate the battle space, the quicker uh, this dissipates and, uh, and we can get back to a, 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 the right normal. We need to dominate the battle space. Let that sink in. The United States Secretary of Defense is calling the parking lot at the KFC the battle space. Don't shoot! He's not really a colonel. It's just Jim Gaffigan in a wig. So, the U.S. military may soon be deployed against U.S. citizens. Listen, Mr. President, you don't want to launch a land invasion in America without a clear exit strategy. That's a quagmire. You'll never quell the local people. They're too heavily armed. And the fact that your president proves they're not ready for democracy. Now, Trump's idea of pitting the U.S. military against U.S. citizens has our neighbors to the north worried. Because today, we heard from Canadian Prime Minister and cover model for a romance novel called The Lustful Librarian, Justin Trudeau. During his daily press conference, Trudeau was asked about the situation in the U.S. You've been reluctant to comment on uh, the words and actions of the U.S. president, but we do have Donald Trump now calling for military action against protesters. We saw protesters tear gas yesterday to make way for a presidential photo op. I'd like to ask you what you think about that. And if you don't want to comment, what message do you think you're sending? That's a long pause. I've had the time to grow this luxurious and extremely real mustache. Do you have an answer? We all watch in horror and consternation what's going on in the United States. Wow! Right now, Canada is that guy who checks to see if the downstairs neighbor got eaten by his cats. And his cats have tanks. We have got a great show for you tonight. When we return, I will talk with Keegan-Michael Key. I'll also be Zooming with author and head of the Robin Hood Foundation, Wes Moore. Stick around.